What's up guys? Today I am working on a 1999 996 Carrera 4. And what's really cool about this car, uh, it's a buddy of mine, first of all, and he tracks the hell out of it. So I'm gonna take the camera, show you a little things that are going on in the clear bra, and it's really gotten beaten up. And this clear bra has been on for a while, so we'll talk about um, what to do about those things. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this car to a car show. What I like to do is demonstrate at these car shows, uh, you know, before and after and how to buff and all, all kinds of questions that they're gonna ask. So what I thought would be great is he wanted me to detail the car anyway. So I would surprise him. What I'm gonna do is split the car into two, meaning front to back and do one side and have it look perfect, then bring it to the car show and have people look at it and say like, oh my gosh, you know, one side looks amazing, the other side doesn't. And then during the car show, I'm gonna restore, you know, obviously so it looks perfect. Um, and I think it's gonna be a great learning lesson. So I wanna take another quick video. I know I haven't shot a bunch. We are shooting season two of Drive Clean coming up soon. And that's gonna be 13 episodes. It's gonna be a lot more in depth and we're gonna show interiors and motorcycles and all the things that you guys asked. But um, this is a little bit of a hiatus so that we can do uh, uh, pre-production and get everything set up for you. So it's just me and you and the camera and we're gonna work on this uh, 996, almost a conversion to a GT3. It's a Carrera 4, but he basically put everything in here and roll cages and upgraded the motor, uh, the brakes, the whole thing. So it's basically a GT3, but a 996. So uh, let's get started. All right guys, so we skipped a few steps um, in the video because I've shown it a hundred times and I'm, I'm sure you guys are up to speed on it. So since we're gonna restore the paint because it's so trash and it hasn't been touched in years, what we did was we rinsed it down. I did the wheels, of course, uh, in the normal fashion. Rinsed the car down after that and then I used um, you know, uh, regular uh, dishwasher uh, detergent, um, detergent or soap. I uh, apologize for the dog barking and there's a guy cutting the lawn, but again, you're, you're with me. This is, uh, this is the off the record, behind the scenes type thing, so uh, I apologize about that. So uh, the next thing you want to do is after you wash it down, I rinsed everything. Now the car, as you can see, is still wet. I want to show you something cool um, because we're going to clay the car. Now everybody knows about clays. You've seen a couple of my videos, um, but I'm going to show you a couple of different tips uh, that I really wanted to spend some time talking about. That's why we're going to skip some other things and I'll just tell you what I did because I have 100 videos on there. So here we go. This, uh, this obviously is clay. You guys remember this. You saw it in uh, when I did the Redworks Porsche and you saw how much it picked up. Um, pretty basic. The newest stuff on the market, it's just hitting the, you know, the, the retail market now. It should be out. This is, a, uh, this is from Nanoskin. This is a towel that has the same type of properties as this, but on the top of it. Now, there's some pluses and minuses to it, but the big thing is, in theory, if you drop this on the ground, you can wash it off with, uh, with a towel, or with a towel, with, with the water, and you're good to go. In this one here, if you drop it on the ground, it's pretty much garbage because once you knead it again, once you go like this, it, you know, the rocks are still in there. And this part, you know, this one here, it, it kind of runs off. So that's why they're claiming it's much better. The second claim, see how there's microfiber on the, on the backside and microfiber on the front and then they, I don't know, they use some sort of machine and they put the, you know, this material on here that's, that's sticky, kind of like the clay. So, you know, in theory you're supposed to fold it up and you can cover bigger areas with it as opposed to this. Now if I'm doing a full restoration and, you know, I'm getting tons and tons of, uh, you know, time to do it and, and, and um, you know, getting compensated properly or whatever, I'm going to take my time and use this little tiny guy and make sure I cover every little square inch because I do think um, the results are much better with this just because it's more exact. Does that, does that make sense? You know, this here is kind of a quicker sweeping motion. Like look how much I can cover at once. Does it pick it up? Does it work? Yeah, it works. But just in my opinion, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be on a car for a long, long time, I still prefer this. Not to say that this is bad. It's just, um, sometimes it, it's, it's easier to get, you know, I can manipulate this and get this into my little, see, it's like a little finger spot and I can get in here or whatever. This one is just sometimes a little bit bigger, but uh, to each his own, it's still, Good product if you're looking to do something quick. And the other thing here is, they made a nano skin uh, cover for um, dual action polisher, which is also really cool. So if you have really heavy stuff, this is when I would use this, and I've used it a few times, and it in fact works. Now these, all three of these, accomplish the same thing. Now they have benefits, like I said, you can drop this one, you can't drop that one. You know, this is with the machine. Uh, I'll use all of them. I think they're great. Uh, I'm kind of old school. I like I like the old school clay because I don't really have a tendency to drop it, and so a lot of the positive things about this and the negative things about this don't really affect me. Is that if that makes sense? Next big thing, 
uh, hopefully the camera's still on, is I have uh, my spray wax, right? So you hit it, and then, then you clay. No problem there, right? But, and I'm a manufacturer, and I want you to buy as much as you possibly can, then that'd be great. But why don't you do this? Why don't you use the soap that you just used to clean the car? So this, that's actually dish soap instead of car soap. So then I use that as lubrication. What does that do? Nothing. It does the same exact thing. It's lubrication, but you save dollars from buying more spray wax. Remember, you know, this is how manufacturers make a lot of money. Yes, this is my stuff. Great. Buy as much as you want. That would be awesome. But at the same time, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to take money from you guys. I don't think it's right. So just use the soap that you have. What I like to do is keep it in my left hand, squeeze it out, clay the car, move on to the next section, dunk your pad, you, you get it. It actually saves a bunch of money that way. In theory, you can use uh, the spit. Um, and you know, if I'm doing just one little tiny area, then I'll use the spit. But if I'm doing the whole car like I'm doing here, save your money, use the wash mitt, use a clay bar or one of these three, whatever you feel comfortable. So um, you know, my opinion is they all work great. I just happen to be old school and I'm more comfortable with this, but those are perfectly good. So uh, let's clay the car, dry it off, and then uh, time to restore it. All right, now, before we move on to the restoration phase here, there's one last thing I wanted to remind you. This car is clear broad. Can you see the, the line right there? So the nose is clear broad, the front here, and some of the, the side panels. Um, one of the big things I get in a lot of the questions and the forums and all that kind of thing is, can you clay a clear broad? And the answer is yes. Um, you know, you want to do it nice and uh, gentle. Uh, but the thing is, remember, clear bras uh, are designed, yikes. Uh, it's, this one's kind of nasty. Uh, clear bras are designed to soak up or absorb all the things that you hit on the road. And that's why you can kind of feel it. There's a little bit of, you know, if you really get into it, there's a little bit of impact that you can tell it, it, it takes. It's kind of soft. Um, and the reason they're designed like this is over time, you know, two, three years, they're going to yellow and they're going to get just spotted with tons of things because they absorb. It's designed to peel off and put back on. Otherwise, these companies would go out of business. It makes sense. Um, so they only last so long. This one here has been on for, I don't even know, five, six, seven years, I think he told me. So it's time to go. Um, uh, but it, it is okay to clay it. Just do it nice and soft because you're going to try to pick up or peel out anything that's in the clear bra. Once it you know, catches a bug or catches a rock, um, especially the bug, it'll actually absorb into, into the clear bra um, if you don't uh, immediately take it off, you know, within a day or two, it'll eat up and then you'll see this random little pits. So uh, the big thing is, yes, you can clay it, just do it soft. Um, and two, whenever you get bugs on it, try to, try to take them off a little bit faster than you might normally want to uh, because it does have a tendency to etch uh, the clear bra. So I'm going to clay the rest of the car, like I said, but uh, just gently do the clear bra and as if it was paint, just be a little bit more you know, cognizant of the fact that it is plastic and it's not paint. So other than that, let's keep going. So here's a view of what I've done and what I'm about to do. This is what I've done. Let's try to get that, see that light? Yikes, that's what I'm about to do. See all the stains on this thing? It's crazy. This is what I just did. See the light? I'm trying to catch it for you so you see I'm not doing any tricks or anything. All right, so I'm about to show you right now what I did to make this. I'm going to make this turn into this. And I know we've done a ton of examples of this, but uh, every car is different and there's new techniques and all kinds of stuff. So I'm going to show you that right now. All right, guys, the big question is, how did I get this side or how did I get this side to look like this side? Now, what do I need to do? Um, is a few different things and I wanted to talk to you about the microfiber cutting pads. Now we've talked about that in the past and I'm going to show you a few different things. I'm going to have to cut this up a little bit because it's going to be a little bit long, but um, it's, it's more important to understand uh, what's going on and how the tools have evolved. So the first thing is explaining what I did over here. What I did was use the microfiber cutting pad with specifically um, the fine abrasive paste from Sonax, which is very, very good. And then I did another section with the microfiber cutting pad that's Meguiar's um, and used the Meguiar's uh, correction compound, which is also very good. Now, I'm going to get super nerdy with you, so stick with me here. Um, there's two different types of pads. Now, these are both microfiber cutting pads. Now, there's a lower step, which is the microfiber finishing pads, but for now, these are microfiber cutting pads, and obviously I've used them, and I was using them on this car. Now, here's the difference. 
Oh, I'm holding back here. Hopefully it's in focus. Watch. See the thickness? This is what's called open cell technology, and this is called closed cell technology. Now what's happened is um, there are two, two different schools of thought, and I kind of, to be honest with you, I keep flip-flopping back and forth, and I'm like, I'm not really sure which one, because some works and some doesn't. Like everything, there's not you know, one product that fixes all. You're going to need, especially if you're a pro, you're going to need lots of stuff, and I'll show you what I have over here um, in a minute. But it's important to understand, open cell, uh, I'll pull the camera in and show you, you know, i got to pull it in close. They're literally open foam cells, and what that does is it allows to dissipate more heat. Um, and remember, we're using a dual action uh, polisher here, either a porter cable, in this case I'm using the Garage Garage, I've said before, has a little bit more oomph, a little bit more balls, if you will, um, more torque, um, what I need to correct these really, really bad paints. Now, for 99.9% .9 of people, I think this is going to be fine. And obviously I'm testing, and I know you guys are going to shoot me a lot of questions, emails, where do I get them? Obviously I'm trying to build my um, the right stuff, but uh, I only make products I feel like that need to be fixed and a lot of the compounds that are out there um, including my big competitors which they're really not my competitors because I'm not competing with anybody I, I mean I hope you guys buy it but if you don't that's cool buy Meguiar's buy 3M buy Sonax buy you know Zymol whatever whatever makes you happy is cool by me but um, in terms of the polishes and compounds um, the big companies uh, you know they've done they've done some pretty good jobs uh, Meguiar's done great Sonax has done great um, so, I'm, you know, big props to them. It's, it's good stuff. But anyways, these are pads that aren't Meguiar's and they're open cell technology. Like I said, it's um, a little bit uh, safer and softer um, because it's open cell so it doesn't um, get as much heat as, let's say, a closed. See how much thinner it is? See that? Um, and what this does is I think it generates a little bit more heat, which in this particular case, that's the key because I need more heat to correct this paint because it, this, is more, this is more of a pro job here. This, this one's pretty bad and it's black. So that's kind of the difference between the two, the two big different companies out there. Obviously Meguiar's, Big M on the back, and this one uh, you know, is a smaller upcoming company. Um, for this particular job, I would choose the uh, closed cell foam because of the heat, like I said, because I need a little bit more torque, a little more heat. Um, and this one here, uh, I probably use 99% of the time and it's a little bit safer. All right, since I uh, just uh, flipped the camera off and, and back on, uh, the sun has just come out. As you can see, this is really bad over here. I didn't fix this section, but it's still in the shade, so it looks better, and then that's the repaired section. So just focus right here for a second if you could. And I mean, it's, it's tore up. Uh, what I'm gonna do is move the camera, I don't know, somewhere where it's not so funky light. And I'm gonna show you, when I finish my last point, we talked about the open cell, closed cell, and the microfiber cutting pads, which are much safer because they generate heat in a very specific and, lack of a better word, safe way. This is the big jobber, um, and I put, a, I put a little three inch on here just for picking up purposes, a little bit lighter. Um, what this does is generate a lot more heat. I know we've talked about this a bunch, but what I'm going to do is move the camera, and I'm going to show you, I'll just do a tiny little section with this, and you'll see it'll get uh, cleaner meaning I'll repair it much faster, um, but if I put the light, which I'll show you, uh, hopefully the sun kind of goes behind a cloud, um, I'll show you uh, the little bit of swirls that it puts in. So the difference between you know, one of these guys here and a, and a dual action polisher, yes, it may take a little bit longer to do, but you won't get the time delay of repairing the swirls, like taking the swirls out. So it's kind of, like I said, it really bridged the gap between using one of the big boy um, you know, rotaries and, and moving really, really fast and repairing fast uh, versus doing a little bit slower, but anybody can really do this. So I'm going to show you um, a couple of different steps. I'm not, I wouldn't normally do here. I'm only going to show you guys. So it kind of gets in there. And like I always say, it marinates a little bit. And you go like, oh, all right, I, I, I'm getting the philosophy behind uh, you know, this new way of repairing a car because you have to understand the old to understand the new. So let me uh, move the camera and show you the old way. I'm wearing my Dillon optics. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's super bright right now. My, I'm going blind. Um, all right, I'm going to pick a spot right here because the sun, I'm going to take advantage of the sun. I'm going to do it right here so you can see it. And like I said, I'm going to go old school. Uh, so old school means using the old 3M stuff, using a rotary buffer, and I'm using the yellow pad. It's a little dot right there. 
try to keep it. That's actually a little bit too much stuff because I. All right, we go to three. So what I'm doing is just backing it down right now. All right. Easy enough. All right, since it's compound, what you'll see is what you're supposed to see. You're gonna see little swirls. Now, I did this a little bit quicker than I should have. I should have gone a little bit slower, but the point here is I'm trying to show you the swirl marks that I'm putting into the paint. Um, so now I'm gonna switch pads and then polish it, and you'll see how nice it looks, but if I pull the camera in close, you'll see these tiny little swirl marks. So I'm going to show you the vice versa thing right here. So let me get the pad. See my little spot here? It's all hazy and nasty. towel. Now you can see in this area right here, looks pretty good, right? I mean, see the, see all the crap here and this looks great. Now most of you might be saying, well, why don't you just do that all the time? Um, I do do that sometimes if there's a bigger scratch or I need to go after it. Um, the thing is, like I've said millions of times, this is a scalpel. This can be an amazing machine, but if you make a mistake, just like a scalpel, you're going to go right through a bunch of tissue and not really good so you need to kind of be for lack of a better word a surgeon with this one you got to be a pro detailer you got to be testing and playing and playing and playing so i know that i can do the whole car with this and get away with no swirls because it's taking me you know x amount of years to do that but why when i can do this it, what it takes us a little bit longer but then i don't have to worry about the swirls which is the big thing with a customer so um i'm gonna turn this off and then i'm gonna show you i don't know we'll do right here and I'll use the microfiber cutting pad and I'll do a little bit of a bigger surface um, and show you that you can get the same results but without any of the danger, which is pretty cool. Mind you, am I still gonna keep this? Do I still need it? Yeah, of course, I'm taking out heavy scratches, but I'm a pro, like th that's what I need. I need all the arsenal of things, all the ammo, if you will, um, to do a lot of different cars. If you're working on your car, dual action polisher all day long, microfiber, top, microfiber cutting pad, end of story. Let's, uh, let's switch and I'll show you the microfiber uh, cutting pad, what it's gonna do right here. All right, well, I took a little break in between the last door and this one, and I wanted to do a spot right next to it, but it was just getting too hot. And as you can see, I kind of rigged up this little towel here to, to block, and I, I went inside, and the paint is now cool, but of course, I'm back in the sun. Um, uh, but I wanted to show you anyways, and in the sun is sometimes a better place to do it. So I have the panel I'm going to do right underneath here. Um, I'm just trying to keep it cool. And I'm going to show you how to do it with a microfiber cutting pad. Now, I've shown you how to do this on a few different... Uh, uh, cars, remember that Ferrari that we did, um, but what I'm using right now is a Meguiar's microfiber cutting pad, which is the closed cell, and I need it here because this is black and it's really, really bad. So I'm going to put a little correction compound on there, just a little bit. Let me flip this up. This is my little, uh, you know, on the racetrack, you ever see the tire covers on the uh, tires? This is my fender cover for buffing. All right. Um, so again, we're going to work it in. You can put it on two and massage it in, or I'm going to go right to it because it's getting really hot really fast. I'm on five.
putting some pretty good pressure. Now again, um, I have to reiterate that not ideal with the sun like this beating on it. I, you know, I pull it inside the garage and do what I need to do and then pull it out here so I can take video because in there is just too dark for the camera. <laughs> Grab a microfiber towel. Ooh, it's getting hot. All right, now all the imperfections are gone. I'm going to pull the camera in and show you. You're going to see there's a little bit of scratches in the paint. I'm going to put it back. We're going to do the next step, which is with the green um, foam pad here, and then you'll see that pop out. So let me grab the camera and show you. Uh, you see that? See those fine little marks right here? You want that. See, the, see, all, see look around here too. You're looking directly in the sun. This is a sun mark. But if you look here and here and all around here, you can see it's a little whitish. That white is what you want. That, that means that's the haze that they say, oh, that, you know, after you compound there's a haze. That's the haze that you're looking for. So it took me a while to figure out that, that is, that's what you want. So let me back out a little bit. And don't, don't look at the sun here. That, I mean, that's going to look like there's a swirl, but there's not. That's why you don't want to work in the sun too many times. I mean, you want to pull it out in the sun when you're done. But So anyways, this overall haze that you got going here, that's what you want. All right, now to get those little haze marks out. Now you're just going to take green mica fiber pad here and you're going to use a little polish and basically polish that out. It's going to look amazing. So let's do that real quick. Again, I have to keep reiterating, not cool that we're in the sun right now. Repetition is the key to success here. All right, microfiber towel, wipe it clean. Now I'm going to pull the, um, the camera in again and show you up close. That's pretty good. Okay, Here we go. so this is the paint afterwards. Now see how, see the reflection coming off? Now I'll try to stay out of the sun right now because it's a bit funky right now with, the, with, with what we're doing, but remember, Look at it overall. Remember how hazy it was? Look at the reflection. See how it's really bouncing back off? So that, that's the polish. Well, what do you guys think? This is the, the completed passenger side of the car. It looks pretty good compared to what it was, I can tell you that. Let's 
see. Well, there's the nasty side. Again, it doesn't really come up on camera, but if you look somewhere up in here, see how it's, see how it's very foggy? And see how this tree over there is green? I come over here, see how it's white? Green. That's sort of the depth. I mean, there's a lot of other things going on in here. I mean, look at that. This is the side I haven't done, obviously. I mean, just wazoo. Crazy. And we'll go to this side. Oops. Tripping. Uh, there it is. See how it's... There you go. Sometimes it's hard for it to catch. Two lights, how about that? See the difference? Versus, we'll walk around. Yowza. So, massive difference. I'm gonna back up. So, there's what I did. Split the car into two. Um, now, that the, now that I need the sun, it's not out, but the left side over here I just completed and I'm going to do the rest uh, at the car show and demonstrate for people and have them you know practice but let's see let's see if we can get a better view like that see how it's very green and brilliant depth not so deep See, it's a little bit hazy or white I call it white this is what it looked like and uh, as always shoot me emails but before and after, right there. Thanks, guys. Bye.